Coming from a family of seven, it hasn't been the easiest. Growing up, I always had to feel like I was part of a parent, I guess, just because I would, I would always watch out for my siblings, make sure that they were doing their homework. Is the rice done? My mom works for Kidoba and my dad works in a landscaping company. It's a funny story, I never pictured myself going to college because everyone in my family, um, either you graduate and that's it from high school or you drop out early and just get a job. Okay, read the white. What does that say? Disturb. You want some breakfast? Okay, what's the last word? He always loves what he does. He loves to help with my little one at home. He is um, my son, and I love him. Seventy-eight percent of our students are first-generation students, first-generation college-going, first in their families to have the opportunity to go to college. Here's the tuition for a resident, mm -hmm. and then this actually, it's kind of like a free, not discount, they call it a stipend. I do a wide variety of things here in the Future Center. I also coordinate all the colleges that visit Thomas Jefferson High School, um, as well as any visits that we go off campus to another college or university. Give me a real person hug. Thank you. Oh, I love you. I love your dorm. Okay, you, so awesome. you, and this is just the outside. Tyler's an excellent example of what we want to do here at the Denver Scholarship Foundation and in the future centers at the high schools. There's a lot of kids that will come through like Tyler, not really sure where to start because they're first generation students. My first visit to like a university was the University of Northern Colorado and it was love at first sight. Like, I remember that day like it was yesterday. I applied to the University of North Colorado by myself, like with no help from the Denver Scholarship, big mistake. Then when I realized I got denied, I began to panic because I didn't apply anywhere else. So I practically lived in the Future Center for the next, <laughs> for the rest of my senior year. I knew it'd be a little bit difficult for her to get accepted because of her grade trend. And I said, Tyler, there's gotta be a reason for this up and downward trend on your transcript. Is there something more that you want to tell me? I thought when I got denied that that was going to be the end and Ms. Rocha suggested uh, community college and I said, oh, that won't do because I had already set in my mind that I was going away to school. So then that's when I told Ms. Rocha my story. Jay, my mother's fiance, was in the military. He was in the, the army. You know, he was my father figure like that, were, that was in the house with me. And then Jay, my mom's fiance, he got killed in a roadside bomb in Iraq. So his money stopped coming because, you know, him and my mom weren't married. So pretty soon it was like, oh, um, we lost our house. And so then it was like staying with family. Then it became hotels, then it became motels, then it became our car. But then once school started back for sophomore year is when it became like difficult. Having absolutely no stability of a home life or even a place to study and get good grades and really start that, okay, I want to go to college at some point. So for her, it was just getting through the day. I didn't know where I would end up because, um, you know, when you're living out of your car, you don't, you don't see it. I just... I didn't even know that I would finish high school, at least on time. I mean, that was that was a goal in itself, was just to get to school, and that itself was an obstacle. After she told me her story, um, I was like, well, we need to write about that in your essay, because that is a very compelling circumstance that an admissions office needs to know about. We wrote a letter of reconsideration and um, set up a meeting with the uh, head of admissions. On our way back up, she was really nervous, in tears. I miss, I don't think I'm going to get accepted. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I wanna go to UNC. Well, I, ha I really didn't know. Cause some people, there's some things you just know. Not at this point. I got an email later that evening from the admissions rep. And he was like, you know what? I don't want her to wait. I really think that she's gonna do well here. And we went ahead and accepted her. So I called Tyler. So as soon as she, um, 
she told me I was admitted. Like two days later, I got a letter in the mail, my real letter, like letter of acceptance. I was so happy. My mom put it on the refrigerator. I actually thanked her and I said, this is why I love my job, because of situations like this. And I told her, I'm like, your life is gonna change from here on out. Oh boy, this is a little crazy. It's quiet, too quiet. Yo descubrí que era algo especial desde que él tenía como unos seis o siete años. Sí pensé que él pudiera ir al colegio por un lado y por otro no, porque como somos familias humildes. Edgar es muy, muy smart. Por eso él cuando tuvo la oportunidad de ir a la escuela de minas, él sueña y nosotros también que un día, como en cinco años, va a ser ingeniero. I remember the day we got the letter and he he came with it to inside our house and uh, say, "Mom, I have the letter. We have. I'm going to school. I'm going to school." And we are happy with that, happy and sad at the same time because you you never know if he can go up because the money he has a letter he he they accept him, but we don't know at the same time if he he can go or not, how we can pay for it, how. If it wasn't for the Future Center, I honestly don't know where I would be. Um, Right now, I would probably be without direction or any sort of guide as to where my life would be leading to. Edgar, I met early in his senior year. You know, he said that he was interested in engineering, and we started looking into different engineering programs. The Denver Scholarship Foundation not only helped me through the application process, they also helped me financially just because I knew I was going to be a little bit short, and DSF was able to provide for that and help me, help my family with that burden of me paying for college. As soon as I stepped on campus, I loved it. It's crazy because I never thought I would be in a student at School of Mines. What's your biggest class? Like class size? Mm -hmm. Sociology. And uh, there's about 50 in there. That's oh, the biggest, I know, not at all. She's doing amazing. She's doing really well in her classes. I swear she knows everybody on campus already. She was nominated for Homecoming Queen as a freshman, which is awesome. In about 10 years, I would like to have um, my own talk show on ESPN, and it'd be called Off the Court. Um, it would have athletes just, you know, chilling on my couch, and uh, we'd be talking about anything but sports. That or a number of other things. There's so many things I could see myself doing, but that would be my ultimate dream job. In five years I see myself as a civil engineer just because I love how buildings are able to be you know constructed and it just fascinates me how they're able to stand and I've always loved the convention center building downtown. Just um, the way the arch sticks out and it doesn't fall. I mean it's just phenomenal. It takes my breath away every single time I see it. On the left hand side is the whole number. Oh yeah, the left hand and the right hand is the fraction. The fraction part. Okay, so thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, now this was the one I was talking about. This. I see education as an investment. It's not only a moral imperative, um, it's an investment that if we're ever going to get out of this economic hole that we're in as a country, as a state, um, we have to invest in education. Well, I think it's really unique for a city to have an entity that makes a commitment to all the students across the school district. The goal of the Scholarship Foundation is to remove the financial barriers to college. And I think in the future it will become a cornerstone. It will become a reason for people to move here. It will become a reason for people to enroll in DPS and be proud to send their, and, and anxious to send their kids to Denver Public Schools because they'll know that the barriers between high school and college are being removed. All students have potential and all students have ability and for many of our students they just need a chance and someone to give them a little bit of direction and they're going to do amazing things. Thank you Denver Scholarship Foundation.
Thank you, Denver Scholarship. I should write you guys a thank you card. That's what I should do. Put that on my to-do list. Oh, I'm exhausted. <laughs>